You know, someone asked Yogi Berra one time, if Joe DiMaggio were playing today, what do you think he would hit? And Yogi, without any hesitation, said about 240. He said, wait a minute. You're talking about the greatest guy that ever played the game of baseball. Ten World Series, nine World Championships, and you said he'd only hit 240 or 250? And Yogi looked at him and answered in all seriousness. He said, well, after all, you got to realize he's 80 years old now. <laughs> Let's bring him out. The Yankee Clipper, Joseph Jones of Paul DiMaggio. You know, I, uh, thank you, thank you for that warm reception, ladies and gentlemen. I got to ask you something, Joe. I've got to ask you this. You played on 10 World Series ball clubs and nine world championships. How in the world did you accomplish that? <laughs> you know, first off, before I answer you, Tommy, I want to thank you for making this presentation to me, and of course the, the uh, hospitals and the people are all behind it. This is one of the second, well, I guess the second Life Achievement Award, I b believe, that I have, uh, and I appreciate it very much. But to answer your question, let me say that, Tommy, when you have five or six potential Hall of Famers on your team, and they eventually get to the Hall of Fame, that's when you win pennants and championships. And the only thing you'd have to be concerned about is getting the ball players to bed on time. <laughs> I like to turn the clock back just a few years, like in 1934. When my contract with the San Francisco Seals in the Pacific Coast League was purchased by the New York Yankees for delivery in 1936, which meant I had to play the 1935 season with the San Francisco team. And as Tommy said, I hit 398 that year and did not win the championship. The fellow that beat me out hit 399. In any event, the day came that I had to go to spring training. And we had two fellows that lived in San Francisco, Frank Crisetti and Tony Lazari. They called me on the telephone, and they asked me, they said, Joe, we know you're with the ball club now. We'd like to take you to spring training. If you drive along with us, we're, you're, well, you're welcome. And I said, certainly I am. I'm going to be with you. I guarantee that, because I thought I would learn something about the major leagues. And as it was, let me get ahead of the story. As it was, we did drive, and in the whole trip, we didn't say 25 words. In any event, we took off from San Francisco in Tony Lazari's car, and we would drive along, and we'd gas up, you know, they'd drive 250 miles apiece, and they didn't let me drive at all. And we did that for a couple of days. We'd get a bite to eat, we'd gas up, and on the third day, we went through the same routine. We uh, got a bite to eat, had a good night's rest. We had the car all gassed up, and as we walked into the car, it was Tony Lazari that said to Frank Crisetti, Frank, why don't you drive the next couple of hundred miles? I'm a little tired. And, uh, and Frank said, just a moment, Tony. I drove 250 miles last night. He said, I'm a little tired, too. So they were going back and forth, and suddenly Tony Lazari looks into the back seat, and I, there I am, all cuddled up in the corner there. And he pointed to me, and he said, what about you, Joe? Why don't you drive? And when I told him I didn't know how to drive, he let out a growl, and I thought I would have to walk the rest of the way to St. Petersburg. <laughs> In any event, we got there with no more mishaps, and um, we got a good night's rest at St. Petersburg. And the following morning at 8 o'clock in the morning, I got a knock on the door, and here it was, Tony Lazari, who 
practically led me by the hand to the clubhouse. And he introduced me to all these famous players. Joe McCarthy was the manager. And the Hall of Famers that I had mentioned were Lou Gehrig, Bill Dickey. I wish I could remember them all. <laughs> Tony Lazari. Uh, we got one more. Anybody out there in the audience? Lefty Gomez and Charlie Ruffin, two pitches I think Tommy could use today. <laughs> and with that team, of course I met the rest of the ball players as well, and um, we had a good bunch of guys. They played all together, and it was one and fun, funny. It was a lot of fun playing with them. And um, in spite of winning the 10 pennants and nine World Championships, teams that followed afterwards went on to win a lot more pennants and championships. But I'd like to get to uh, tell you one story before we close it all out. And it's about my old friend, Lefty Gomez, who was my roommate. And uh, we're playing a ball game in Detroit. And the score was two to one. The Yankees were leading with a man on first base in the last of the ninth inning. Detroit at bat, he pitches to the next batter, and the next batter hits the ball to him on the first hop. So all he has to do is just turn and throw the ball over to Lou Gehrig at first base, and the game would be over. Instead, for some brain reason, we call him Goofy, and this is one of the reasons why. He turned to second base, and he started the pump like he wants to throw to second base, naturally. Nobody covered. Frank didn't break for second. Tony didn't break for second. So he winds up throwing the ball to Tony Lazari between first and second. Now all hands are safe. And so Tony, you know, being around the club for 15 years, he just didn't throw the ball back to, uh, to Gomez. He walked very gingerly, handed him the ball, and in his own inimitable style of talking, he demanded an explanation. And so... Gomez said, well, you know, Tony, just yesterday, coming down on a train from Cleveland, I picked up a newspaper, and the headline in the newspaper read, Tony Lazari, the smartest man in the major leagues today. He said, now that flashed through my mind. I didn't know what to do with the ball. That's why I threw it to you. I wanted to see what... <laughs> yeah. That was my famous story. I always tell that story. I love it. I enjoy it so much. But did you get the last line? He just wanted to know what he wanted to know what he was going to do with it. In any event, it's been fun being here. I enjoyed the weekend very much, and I hope you all have a good week and all this sort of stuff. God bless you all. Thank you very much. <laughs>